Diddy Kong Racing is one of my all-time favourite games. As a single player experience it set the framework for what all kart racers still use to this day, with its open world adventure mode and a range of courses and vehicles which left Mario Kart 64 in the shade. Although its multiplayer offering was inferior to Mario Kart 64, as an overall package it was head and shoulders above pretty much anything else on the console. So for today's video I'm ranking all 20 of the game's main courses. As many of the courses allow you to play them with any of the three different vehicles in the game, for this list I'm just basing it off the default mode of transport for each track. For today's comments section discussion I'd love to know your DKR memories and which course you have any connections with. Sound off in the comments section down below and let's get on with the rankings. Spaceport Alpha for me is one of the cooler tracks from a visual perspective but the plane really makes this one of the most frustrating to play. From the corridor with shots being fired at you, to the annoying tight vertical turn, it really lacks any sense of speed and instead feels like you're just slowing down throughout the entire course and just trudging along. The music is probably in the mid-range of the game's audio tracks however. Haunted Woods is an example of one of the game's most memorable soundtrack pieces but the overall course is just far too short. The final turn in particular is a pain for anyone who attempts to boost the entire course because it has a nasty habit of throwing you in the air and messing up your time trials. The short length of the course also means that one mistake and it can cost you an entire race. And when there's AI opponents dropping oil or mines over the track, it's one which feels more luck based to get through a clean run than relying on your skill. Everfrost Peak is another aeroplane base level which doesn't really bring much in terms of personality. Although memorable is one of the game's winter based courses, and yes I know there will be a ton of you who relate this to Christmas and so I'll get crucified for this, but it's just a bland course. A nice addition however is the placement of speed boosts, especially the ones for the aeroplane are in strong positions and this really helps with speed runs and time trials when you combine it with the fact that you can also hit many of the ones on the ground which were designed for cars or hovercrafts. Ancient Lake is about as vanilla as first courses come. Whilst more interesting than say Luigi's Raceway in Mario Kart 64, the wide open track and plenty of balloons make this nothing more than a nice warm up track. The shortcut across the grass is a nice touch and the dinosaur roaming is a nice way to throw in a minor challenge but experienced players won't have much trouble polishing off this course in any of the game's modes. Hot Top Volcano should be a plunge into the belly of a dangerous volcano but aside from some of the narrower caverns at the start of the course there really isn't much here to worry about. Although there's the choice of paths through the course there's only one which realistically should be used. The final stretch with a double boost ring helps speed up what is otherwise a slow crawl through a course which needed more fire. Treasure Caves was a surprise even for me to end up so low down on this list, but when I sat down and started putting my rankings together, I couldn't see any qualities to move it above any of the next tracks I'll be talking about. It's a solid course with some changes in terrain, but what ultimately kills it off is the cave section, which has too many bumps and probably could have done with something a bit more interesting to see in the actual cave itself. It's a nice track for time trials, however, it is possible to be boosting through about 75% of the course if you time it correctly, which really helps give it some sense of speed. Space Dust Alley is one of the more unique looking tracks which has some cool sections to it. The multiple routes keep things fresh and the UFO section is very cool looking. The music is also quite catchy and the multiple speed boost layouts make this one of the faster aeroplane courses to play despite having a good lap time to keep you playing. The tricky cavern section towards the end also tests even experienced players and so it's one of the more challenging to play from a technical point of view. Dark Moon Caverns in many ways feels a lot like Rainbow Road from Mario Kart 64. It goes on perhaps a little too long, but at least Rare kind of threw a lot of things at this course to make it memorable. The cavern sections are unique visually, there's parts where you're being shot with lasers, and the loop the loop boost pads give the game a thrilling climax. The music here is one of the least memorable in the game, but with the course being so long, you'll need to concentrate here more so than on some of say the other courses, and there are a few tricky areas where you can still be caught out. Windmill Plains is a course which I always loved as a kid and it is one of my favourites, 
But over time, my love for it has faded, and I think that the windmill sections look superb. There's a nice risk and reward factor with the placement of the speed pads, and when you're playing in the default aeroplane, you can boost pretty much the entire course again by using the ground-based speed pads, which are plentiful. There's one or two tighter bends you'll need to use your R button to turn sharply on, and overall it's a fun, albeit not that difficult course, which is more suited to time trials than, say, a versus mode. Snowball Valley is another course which I feel could have done with being just that little bit longer. It's very action-packed as you have multiple routes to take, and like the name suggests, a snowball valley to compete with, but once you get past that it's over and pretty much into the next lap. The music is great, and really in my opinion there's just not enough here in terms of the actual racing to have any meaningful battles. The silver coin challenge is perhaps the only challenge many people will actually have on this track. It's fun in short bursts, and that's really all I've got to say about this one. Greenwood Village is memorable for both its soundtrack and looks, because from the initial village, into the wooded section, and then into the medieval style castle walls, it's the perfect length and has balloons in the right places to balance out strong racing, and those who prefer item based racing. The shortcut also gives experienced players the edge, and the final sharp turns quickly weed out the stronger players. Walrus Cove is the track which always takes me back to Christmas with its catchy jingle, quality track design and the tricky positioning of some of the speed pads. If someone's good at Diddy Kong Racing, this in my opinion is normally where you'll see it, because a few parts require twitch reflexes to get the perfect lap, and sadly those days are well beyond me now that I'm older. The branching final section of the track is also another way to balance risk and reward, as if you choose the left hand side, you have a narrower finish, but it is quicker to the finish line. Whale Bay is just pure fun from the second the track starts. Whilst I would have liked this one to be a little bit longer, the simple layout and different routes again make this one a quick blast to play. Using the whale to vault onto the pirate ship roof is a classic and then hopping between the palm tree on the way down ensures you'll always be way out in front. The number and positioning of speed boost is just about right to keep this flowing from start to finish. Star City is by far the best of the game's futuristic courses and it finally lets you rip with some speed sections. The sweeping road at the start to skid up, into the speedy tunnel section and then down into the city itself with some tight handbrake turns to keep you on your toes with a finish that lets you chain together speed pads to blast through to the final tunnel. This one's especially good with the smaller characters, say like Tip Tap or Pipsy, as the larger ones may struggle with the narrower course design here. Frosty Village just screams Christmas Eve with its winter village, dimly lit woods and slippery frozen lakes. It's got brilliant music, plenty of shortcuts for experienced players, and tons of areas to use speed boost to launch your car off the tracks to save time. It's a speedrunner's dream, and in time trial it has some fantastic world records. For me, the only thing that lets this one down is that the Misty Woods section could have done with maybe an extra speed pad or two to really help you keep up the midsection flowing, but overall it is a superb track. Fossil Canyon may be one of the simpler tracks in the game, but the lake jump shortcut makes it one of the most fun to play. If you hit that three times, then you're pretty much guaranteed to win. And aside from that, it's a wide course for drifting, and this also allows for some nice weapon combat, and if you find yourself slipping down the ranking order, you do still have plenty of time to use those weapons and items to get yourself back up the rankings. It also has a nice audio track. Pirate Lagoon is another hovercraft only level, and this one is short in duration, so your skills really need to be on point here. If you practice, this can be one of the best courses to go for time trials on, because there's a load of potential areas to glitch out, and even without those, you can still link together speed boosts for the final half of the course. With some sharp turns at the start and finish of the race, and plenty of areas where players will cluster up, makes this one of the more mental tracks to play at times, which is what really a lot of the fun comes into this particular course. Into the top three now, and Crescent Island has a perfect balance of duration, cool scenery, unique track features, and well-placed boosting sections. The final turn in the track will make or break your races, as you've got to decide between taking the long, easy turn or the shortcut, which is an easy clip to mess up. Before that though, you have a trip through the pirate ship, which is a nice section visually, but it's one which takes away a lot of the course's speed in its midsection. 
I've also fond memories of this one playing with my friend because, well, he finally told me where the key was hidden after I've been trying to find it for a few days and it's really helped me to get further into the game's single player adventure mode. Jungle Falls would be number one on this list if I was basing it purely on nostalgia, as this was not only the course my dad and I would race all the time, but it's one which I used to hold world records on. From the moment the race starts you can pretty much speed boost say 80% of the track if you hit them all and being on the shorter side means that if you play someone of a similar skill level to you you'll have some epic photo finish races. The tunnels through the mountain and the skeleton towards the end are good places to evade missiles and the small bridge section means it's game over if you fall into the water. Experienced players generally love this course but I think it's easy enough for noobs to pick up and yet has enough options to save time for experienced players to shave those milliseconds off your race times. And finally, Boulder Canyon takes my number one spot, which I never thought I would ever say, but hear me out. This track is absolute carnage from start to finish. You have the challenge of not just dealing with the hovercraft controls, but a long course which has spinning logs, tight turns, slides down rushing water, and not forgetting the drawbridge which can cause absolute brawls. Hit that bell if you're in first place and watch the drawbridge rise up behind you, cutting off the simple route for all of your opponents and it'll give you vital additional seconds up front. I also love the music, the fact that no two races on this course ever feel the same, and no matter how good or bad you are at the game, it will make you feel like a kid going down the water rapid slide all over again. And so there you have it, that's all 20 of the game's main courses ranked, so let me know yours. I've listed the tracks in the description box if you want to jiggle them up yourselves in the comments section to post, and I'd also love to know which character was your go-to. Mine was always tipped up and it continues to be him right to this day. As always, thanks for watching and until next time.